Hi everyone, I'm Mary Ormori with the Courant Institute of Mathematical Sciences and Google Research, and I welcome you to the next oral session this morning. The first talk will be uh, uh, on combinatorial pure exploration of multi-arm bandits. Uh, it is by uh, Xu Yan Chen, Tian Lin, Irving King, Michael Liu, and Wei Chen with three different affiliations, the Chinese University of Hong Kong, Tsinghua University, and Microsoft Research Asia. And the talk is given by Wei Chen. Thank you. Uh, I'm Wei Chen from Microsoft Research Asia. Uh, I'm here to present the paper, Combinatorial Pure Exploration of multi arm Bandit. Uh, uh, this is a joint work with Shou Yuan Chen, Tian, uh, Tian Lin, Irvin King, Michael Liu. And uh, Shou Yuan, my former intern, was supposed to be here to deliver the talk, but due to the visa reason, uh, I'm giving the talk instead. So let's start. So the story starts with a single arm bandit, which is the nickname for slot machines. And it has one arm, and it robs your money. So it has a single arm bandit. But uh, for the sake of uh, optimism, uh, let's say we get reward instead of we lost money. So uh, we play the one arm, and we get a reward. And the rewards come from unknown distributions. So that's single arm bandit. Now, Say you are going to Las Vegas, you are facing not one, but a whole bunch, a whole row of uh, armed bandits, as n of them. And so you want to be smart of it to uh, get some uh, rewards and get as much reward as possible. So each arm has unknown distribution, but they may be different. So what you try, you maybe play one arm, select the green arm, and get some rewards. And then later you switch to play some different arms, get uh, different rewards. And what you want is uh, after a number of plays, say T rounds, you accumulate uh, a number of rewards, and that's your goal. You want to maximize your cumulative rewards. And luckily, you have a whole a lot of uh, research literature you can look into to get the best strategy, which uh, plays the trade-off between uh, exploitation and exploration. But there's a, a related problem called pure exploration. What is pure exploration? Now imagine you are going on a trip, uh, not by yourself, but with your boss. And your boss don't care about your gain or loss. All he asks is uh, try one night, and at the second day, tell him what is the best arm. And he will always, always play the best arm. So you have to try out to find out which is the best arm. And so since your career is on the line, you have to try much harder. And, but luckily, again, there is also uh, literature on this. It's called pure exploration of multi arm and bandit. So basically, you play a certain number of rounds, and your goal is to find the single best arm. And the reward you collect is during your trial, it doesn't count. Now, besides uh, satisfying your boss, there are some applications. For example, doing testing, uh, clinical trials, and others. Uh, for example, uh, if you are testing uh, several variants of a certain feature before you want to put it into the deployment, and each trial, or each variant can be considered an arm, and you play in arm I, meaning, say, you're trying a certain variant. For example, here, uh, you show a, uh, <coughs> you show an ad with certain variants, and the reward would be some user clicked the ad and got the reward. And here, you want, after a certain trial period, you find the best variant of your certain feature. Now, for pure exploration, there are two uh, variants of problem form formulations. The fixed budget uh, formulation asks that uh, you only play capital T rounds. That's fixed. And at the end, you want to report uh, one arm, and you want to minimize the probability that what you report is not the best arm. Now, fixed confidence is another variant. Here, you are given a confidence requirement, uh, delta. Delta essentially is uh, bound on the probability of error. And your goal is to minimize the number of rounds you play to reach this uh, confidence level. Now, in this paper, we're looking into the combinatorial pure exploration problem. 
Here, uh, in each round, we're still playing one arm, but the objective is different. The objective here is one to find a set of arms, M star, from a collection of sets, which we call uh, here uh, a calligraphic M, uh, we call decision class, which satisfies certain combinatorial constraints. So from certain subsets, you want to find one subset that gives you the best reward. And the reward is by measuring the sum of the expected rewards of each arm. And the problems we can consider, including finding the top K arms, or if it's more complicated, looking at the graph, each edge may be an arm, and you're looking at finding the spanning trees, or shortest paths, or maximum weighted matchings, and so on. So let, let's motivate a little bit more using a matching as example. For example, consider a cross-sourcing platform. On one end, you have workers' registers, and on the other side, you have task registers. And the platform wants to do the best matching, like work, worker working on the best suited tasks. And when the worker registered, maybe there's a test or trial period to give some simple tasks for the workers to do so that you can understand the performance of worker on each potential type of the task. And this trial period will correspond to the uh, uh, pure exploration period. And in the end, you want to find the best matching uh, uh, workers working on real tasks. And there's other examples I'll skip. So there's some existing work uh, which uh, solve uh, uh, some particular problem, like finding the top K arms given a set of arms, or finding top arms in the disjoint groups of arms, which is also called multi-banded problems. But uh, these works uh, treat each uh, individual case separately and is, does not have a unified fr uh, framework. So in our paper, we provide such a general framework that could handle a wide range of uh, combinatorial constraints. And we provide two generic algorithms, one for fixed uh, budget, one for fixed confidence. And we provide a theoretical analysis on the upper bounds, in particular the sample complexity and probability of error for the two algorithms. And we also provide a lower bound. And the lower bound is optimal up to some log factors for many types of uh, such uh, combinatorial constraints, in particular, if the constraints form the basis of a matroid. Now, compared with existing work, uh, we provide the first lower bound for the top K problems and for other more complicated problems like matching, shortest paths, and so on, we provide the first both uh, upper and lower bounds for such problems. Now, uh, let's spend some time to e explain the fixed confidence algorithm. Uh, we call CLUCB, standing for combinatorial lower and upper confidence bound. So the input here is a confidence parameter delta, which is a requirement on the upper bound of the error probability. And we also have a, a general access to a maximization oracle. The oracle takes a vector of uh, arms weights and it will output the best arm given the certain uh, combinatorial constraints. For example, maximum weighted matching algorithm would be serving as such an oracle. And our task is to select a set of arms. <coughs> uh, there's a couple of uh, key quantities uh, the algorithm needs to maintain. One is the empirical mean. Basically, if an arm I has been played few times, and you can get an empirical mean. We denote it as a W bar T, of i, and related to the empirical mean, you also have a confidence radius. Given the confidence radius, you know the lower confidence bound and upper confidence bound, uh, such that with high probability, the true mean will be uh, falling in, uh, in this uh, interval. Now, with the empirical mean and radius, the algorithm goes as follows. Say we already get uh, some empirical uh, observations, and we are at round t. Then for every arm i, we obtain an uh, empirical mean, and we have the vector w bar t. It's the current empirical uh, observation. And we just feed this to the oracle, and the oracle will output the current uh, best uh, subset, m bar t. Now the next step is critical. 
for every arm selected in the MBRT, we instead use their lower confidence bound. And for every arm that's outside the MBRT, we use upper confidence bound. And this adjustment uh, will give a W2 dot T. And then we feed W2 dot T into the Oracle, and it will give a second uh, subset result, M2 dot T. Now the stopping condition is if these two sets, M bar T and M2 dot T is the same, we stop and output this set. Well, in the case they are not the same, we look at their uh, symmetric difference. For example, here we have one, two, three, four. These four arms uh, falls in the symmetric difference of these two sets. And we look at the confidence radius of these, two, uh, these four arms. In particular, arm three has the largest confidence radius. Uh, intuitively, it means uh, three is the most uncertain arm. And then we just play arm three in this round. After that, this round T ends and we go to T plus one. So that is the entire CLUCB algorithm. Uh, now I need to give the uh, theorem showing the sample complexity of the CLUCB algorithm. The complexity is uh, measured in these two quantities, H for hardness of the problem and width of M is, uh, is depending on the structure. So bear with me a few uh, minutes, I'll explain both of them. But uh, before that, I first show the theorem. The theorem says that uh, with probability at least one minus delta, the algorithm will output the optimal set, M star. And it use at most uh, O with M squared times H times log N H over delta rounds. That's the sample complexity. Now we also studied the lower bound and the result is uh, if uh, for any algorithm that can satisfy uh, the error probability at most delta, it must use at least uh, h times log one over delta rounds. So compared with the upper bound, we see that if width of m is a constant, then we have a tight result. And indeed, for certain combinatorial constraints, for example, case as spanning trees, in general, all the basis of a matroid, this width is constant. So we do have a tight result. And for others, they will be different, and I'll mention it uh, later. Now, what is the hardness of H? H is depending on the gap of each arm. And uh, for each arm E, we define the gap uh, depending on whether E is in the optimal set M star or not. If E is not in the optimal set, the gap would be the weight of the optimal set minus the weight of the best possible arm if you force E to be selected in the set. Or symmetrically, if E is in the optimal set M star, you, the gap would be the difference between the weight of the optimal set minus the best uh, possible weight if you force E not to be in the set selected. So that's the gap. And the hardness then is the summation among all the uh, edges uh, so, uh, uh, arms, uh, and the quantity is one over delta E square. Now, the exchange class and the width, this is uh, something new in our technical analysis and is our main technical contribution. So intuitively, what is an exchange class? It's a class uh, use calligraphic B. It's a collection of patches intuitively. The, each patch is a two sets, B plus and B minus. And these patches is used to interpolate between valid sets in the decision class. For example, if you have M and M prime in the decision class, then this patch applied to M, meaning M will subtract B minus and add B plus, it will give another valid set, M prime. So it's still involved. I didn't give the uh, full technical definition due to time. So the width of the exchange class is simply the largest patch size. Look at the, uh, say matching for example. What is the patch or what is the exchange set for matching? It's actually augmenting cycles. So from one match to another match, 
you have to remove some edges and add some other edges, and they always form an augmenting cycle shown as in the picture. So the width in this case will be just uh, the red edges plus the uh, green edges. Now, the width of the decision class M is actually looking at all the possible exchange classes that can transfer any value sets to any other value sets. You find the one that is thinnest, that has the smallest uh, width. And here, for example, if you look at the K sets, the width is actually two, because you can always remove one arm and add another arm, and you do this operation repeatedly to transfer any value set to any other value set. Spending tree also is two, and any basis of a matrix width is two. But for matching and pass, the width will be in the order of size of the vertices, and in general, the width is at most the number of arms uh, in the model. So basically, uh, I have to ignore all the details. The main contribution in our paper, uh, a technical contribution, is to define this exchange class and its related algebra, and then we can conduct generic analysis, not particular to a particular problem. It's a general analysis. So due to time, I think I'll just skip this uh, CSR algorithm. This is a fixed budget algorithm. It also, uh, based on the uh, uh, analysis, will be based on the exchange class and its width. So the result will show that uh, if you're given a uh, budget T, then the probability of success is at least one minus th th this value. So both the fixed budget and the fixed uh, confidence uh, results, algorithm results shows that if you want to uh, guarantee probability of error of delta, then you need t at about width m squared to uh, multiply h, that number of rounds. To summarize, uh, this paper uh, uh, proposed this uh, general combinatorial pure exploration framework. It covers a number of combinatorial problems, and we provide two algorithms, CLUCB and CSAR, and the algorithm only need a maximization oracle, and it has a <coughs> comparable performance guarantees. And the algorithm is also optimal up to log factors for made choice. And this can be uh, considered as a sequel to our recent work on combinatorial multi-unbanded and combinatorial partial monitoring. So together, they all deal with general combinatorial constraints. They all use uh, only rely on a general uh, or maximization oracles and so on. And there's some future work uh, for this uh, research problem. One is we need, still need to tighten the bounds on matching and pass and other non-matroid uh, constraints. And also we are looking to supporting approximation oracles and nonlinear reward functions. That's it, thank you. And our poster will be at number two tonight. Time for a few questions. Um, hello, um, thank you for your talk. It's very interesting. So I was wondering if you can give some uh, intuitive examples or explanations of uh, which kind of constraints uh, are difficult and which kinds of constraints are uh, simple or easy according to your definition of the width. Thank you. Okay, uh, according to the definition of the width here, so. The width depends on the exchange class, which kind of we say as a patches. For example, if you look at spanning trees, that's considered simple because between any two spanning trees, it just removes some edges and add another ed uh, add some other edges. And you can bring it down to atomic operation of removing one edge and adding another edge. So that's the uh, atomic operation. And this atomic operation only involves two arms, so that's simple. But for matching problem, the atomic operation has to be an augmenting cycle. And in the worst case, augmenting cycle can span all the nodes. You have to remove all edges and add all other edges. So that, in this particular case, we consider as a hard problem. And we don't have tight result for that particular problem. Thank you. Any other question? Okay, so let's thank the speaker again. And